Three ball from CG43. They're in front. This, this is flat out ridiculous. From a beautiful left hand. In and out finish. The old fashioned way. Gets to the basket with one to come. From there again. You have got to be kidding me. Tyson Stick wraps it up. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the NBL Pocket Podcast. Recording this on the 19th of September in the evening on the East Coast. We're talking about the Blitz. Joe Core here. Andrew Canyon, how you doing? Hey, Joe. It's uh, evening in the West as well. <laughs> Late in the evening, I said. It's not late in the evening. Would you say it's late in the evening in the West? Oh, it depends on your perspective. 8 p.m.? Mm. Nah, it's not that late, is it? We're no. party animals. We're yeah, ready so to go. You're going to talk some basketball. Let's do it. The Blitz. Um, f- well, we'll do a rundown quickly. Uh, we're talking about, we'll be honest, we're talking about Corey Webster. We're talking about Danny Mills, same team. We're talking about Hutchie, all in that Perth Wildcat mm. orbit. Uh, Hutchie and SEN, that is. And then we're talking about the Blitz risers, fallers, and the, the creamy middles, the stagnants that I'm, I'm calling them that. And then Canyon, yeah, uh, yeah jumping in. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Well, let's start with let's start with what's fresh in my mind, shall we? Can we just let's go through over the uh, the game sure. tonight? Sure. Or the games. Oh, wow. The games. Plural. Sorry, tonight. I actually missed the first one. I saw the last quarter I was having to come home because it wasn't a Western Standard Time friendly time slot. Not at all. So you might have to fill me in I if did, you watch. I just sort of, I actually listened to a lot of it. I had it on KO, on the commute home, watched a bit here. I, I never paid full attention to these Blitz games. Kind of had them on the background, punch in, give it four good minutes. Like, okay, that team looks good. I tried to catch the, the start of games and then situational stuff where it was close. Like, okay, what, this is the most game-like yep. these teams are going to encounter and, and form an opinion off that. Because if you watch all the game, you, you're not getting actually a fair cross-section. No, no. So tonight it was oh, New, New Zealand. New Zealand and Tasmania, they're good teams. I mean, yep. not to jump the gun here, but they're they're on my list of risers, you know, teams mm. that I saw in the Blitz and I had a relatively high opinion of, but it's the, the needle has moved up a little bit. Yeah, it's the battle of the midget guards. Yeah. It, and that's fun. I haven't had that in the NBL for a long time. I love we? a midget guard, especially if they're lightning quick. I mean, you know who else is a small guard who's been lightning quick and done pretty well? Bryce Cott. You stood next to that guy. He is He's- tiny. He's tiny. He'd yeah. be under six foot. Am I right in saying? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's There's like no hope. He's 5'11 like, at best. At, at, with shoes on. So I think yeah. he's a 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, and and slender too, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but super quick. And the guards and the refs do kind of protect you in the NBL. So anyway, sorry. But uh, what do you think of the second game? <laughs> Perth and Adelaide. Well, again, I missed the first few minutes of this game. Unfortunately, I had to rush out in the car. Well, I, um, I, I'm going to correct you there. You didn't mm. miss the start of the game because it was never a game. It wasn't a game <laughs> the moment these guys put on their uniforms. I turned it on and I couldn't believe it. It was like 31 to 6 or something. Yeah. Mm. I could not believe it. And uh it it was that was a that's can I can I can we swear? You yeah, may can swear. That was a shit show. <laughs> Adelaide you are terrible. Listen, oh, I, we, I want to keep this centric on the Blitz, and I don't want to forecast their season. We're going to do a season preview okay. coming All up. Right. Sure. But but I think it's hard not to bleed one into the other. I tweeted it out. I was like, this is going to be a catastrophe. Mm. A catastrophe. Because not only have you got a bad roster, you've also got bad blood. I mean, to be this bad in the preseason yep. and, and the effort level and the way they – this is what was telling for me. They go down big, and then I did catch the first bit, and they had a timeout where it was, you know, it was 18 to 2 or whatever it was. They come out of a timeout, and the first play out is a turnover, just just thrown out of bounds. They come down, give, give up an easy post play to Pinder, go back down, another turnover. It was like contemptuous. It was like, oh, really, coach? You're going to try and instruct us? Watch this. So I think – I'm willing to say I think CJ's lost the locker room. It's bad enough to have a bad roster. This is not a, a bad roster that played poorly. This is – he's lost them. How do you lose the locker room before the preseason? Does that mean you never had the locker room? Never had it. How does that work? Well, I don't think he recruited these guys or has been totally recruited over the top of and made to look a cuck. I hate to use strong words and <laughs> they do it the blitz, but – we have been down this road before. Isn't this exactly pretty much what happened last season? Or they, they looked a little happier last season because they won the preseason. But, this, but there the was last still season they had pros. They, had, they brought in Ian Clark, winner, championship player. They had mm. Franks who was put up good numbers. Cleveland who 
been a winner at Illawarra under Gorgian. And they had a roster they spent on it. This roster's dreadful. And then not only is it a bad enough roster, you know, maybe they could have eked out, you know, a couple of wins. But now they're doing funky stuff with the point guard. You, you take them. You take them, Mike. Trenton Flowers. Wow. So I've watched. I watched the first game he played um, against New Zealand. New Zealand in, in and- the twenty-six point loss. Yeah. Oh, man, there was blood in the water, and those New Zealand guards just went for him. It was it was a bloodbath. He couldn't get the ball past half court. This is the guy that came out. Now, you gotta, I don't know if I admire a guy who talks big game, but if you're going to talk a big, big game, at least show some game what when did you he come say? on the court. Well, he talked about he was going to be the best point guard, and he was like NBA, heading straight to the NBA. You know, early on, he was he was really pumping his tires up. And it just seems like there's too much of this. There's too much of these young kids coming in and saying, I'm going to be all this. Just do the work. And oh. it doesn't look like he's doing any of the work. His entry to the NBL was peculiar because he'd committed somewhere else and then decommitted and kind of was trashing the coach. And I implore people, I, I haven't done the work to – we didn't get paid enough <laughs> to do the research. You go and Google it. But his thing was, really, yeah, committed to a college and then trashed the coach on the way out and, and was a late – Next star. You know, Saar was long rumoured to be coming to the NBL. Yep. This guy was a bit quicker. Maybe the rumours were there, but pen to paper, it was like, bang, he's your next star and, and, and he's in uniform and he's coming out late. And, you know, it, was like, it felt like only a couple of weeks before the blitz. So mm. I think he was just this weird, I think we've got a player who's fallen through the cracks here because, and now he's playing out of position. Like, what's this point guard stuff? Well, he said he's a CJ point guard. CJ with this he fake talk- smile. I'm like, what are oh, you doing, man? man? See, this, this is the one I don't understand, right? CJ was a point guard. Okay, if anybody – he played point guard for Australia. If anybody's going to know point guard player, he is going to know it. He was a good player. Yeah. Um, surely he has seen enough of this Trenton Flowers to go, guy to know this is not a point guard. My only hope, what I came out of the first game from was like, oh, CJ's just given him a given, – thrown him to the wolves and just gone, hey, all right, you want a bit of – you reckon you're a point guard? Go out there and play, big fella, and just let him get eaten alive. You, Maybe a bit yeah, of humble pie. I hadn't pie. considered that, man. I, I think this is this is why I say catastrophe because we've had bad teams that you know get hurt and, and lose games. That's not a catastrophe. That's that's well within the the uh, the wheelhouse of any of these NBL teams. Sure, but this could be a catastrophe because I think the off court stuff is going to play huge. Mm. Yeah, what guarantees have they made to Flowers with this next star and playing in point guard? And maybe you're right. Maybe CJ's gone, oh, man, they're putting pressure on me to start this kid. I don't even want him on the roster, let alone starting point guard. All right, I'm going to make him look a fool in the blitz, and maybe then we can recalibrate and get McCarron back and bring him off the bench. Maybe yeah. that's a strategy. Or he's just cucking out and just been told, no, nope, this kid's playing 30 minutes at point guard. We're going to tank the season. We're going to get the NBA buyout money, and you're just going to smile along and take it. And it, I refuse to believe that Bruton, is, he has been around basketball. You know a player when you see it. And you know a play when you don't. He's not daft. No. I, I, I'm not. No one's fooled. This is a nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> but the rest of the roster's not very good too. And the imports already hurt. And, oh, I know. God, it's man. just a. It's just a. Mitch McCarron sh- is not looking any better. Like I reckon you've got a real problem when Jason Gaddy looks miles better than anybody else on the court. Yeah, he looked all right. Him and Humphreys, <laughs> the only two they got going. And you know Humphreys is going to get injured. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. And there's no protection behind him. Toby mm. Smith Mills is a backup. <laughs> Jeez. And, you know, like capable enough player, but if if, yeah. if he's looking to start, man, he could be a start. Wow. This so, could uh, be a catastrophe. Yeah. Uh just on court. And, you know, where they're losing games by these margins. Average losing margin, twenty nine points so far in the blitz. Yeah, it's not good. Oh boy. Good Are luck. we overacting? Eh, not really. They're pretty bad. But the like, effort and things like that. They that's just my don't issue. even. Yeah, they don't even look close. They just, like even in junk time of this game against the Wildcats tonight, it was just turnover, ball getting stolen. Like it was just. And Detch was just coming down sometimes and just like, yeah, I'll pull the trigger on this contested yep. mid ranger. I'm like, wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, I want to talk about it. And also, there was a time when when they went down big, the score was you know twenty something to five or six, whatever. Mm. And the other import, I want to say Franklin, the guy out of yeah, the Philippines. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he was yapping. Oh, he was he was pointing. He was <laughs> there was a lot of finger pointing going on. He's not happy. And he's got a there's this article out there, this reputation that he has for sort of being quite assertive or um, Okay. 
outspoken yep. or maybe I don't want yeah, to say he, anything. He got sort of shunted from his past team, didn't he? Or there was a Precisely. falling out. Yeah. Precisely. So if you you know you don't want to give a player a crack like that. And what's funny is like, did they learn nothing from last season? Brought in Randall. No, no, no. Yep. We can handle him. And I'm not yeah. saying Franklin is that player, but when you create an environment that breeds discontent and someone's got a predisposition to it, it's a bad start. You're behind the eight ball already. So um, we'll dump on Adelaide more in our season preview because mm-hmm. I, I just don't yep. see any. I, I, do you see any light? Did you see, oh, this player's coming on? And do, do you see Jack, any light? Yeah, Jason Goode looks good. Jason Goode. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, a handsome player, but what, yeah, what, you, know. what are you going to do? Just, yeah. We're going to the finals? With, come yeah. on, give me a break. Hey, speaking of Adelaide. Uh, let's move on. What do you want to talk? Let's go, let's quickly talk about Corey Webster. Yeah, that's what I thought would be a beautiful transition because we had um, we had yeah. Isaac Humphreys playing tonight. Yeah, and, just uh, precise, yeah. Isaac Humphreys, a guy who came out um, last season, too yep. much fanfare, and good on him. It, Lee got behind it, really made a big thing of it. Absolutely. Um, not sure Corey Webster is so on board with it all. Not everyone's on board. No. Well, I don't know, and this is what I wanted to sort of ask and put out to the sort of court of public opinion. I didn't know what Corey Webster meant by the tweet. Was it a joke? Yeah. You know, no. So to people who don't know, picture of the, I guess it is the gay flag, isn't it? Or the mm. LGBTQI, yep. whatever yep. the flag yep. is, the rainbow flag. And above it was when you see this, what is your first thought? Corey Webster wrote mental illness. I, I don't know. I mean, satire or sarcasm always reads poor on Twitter. Was, was that it? Did he mean? The guy's got form. Like, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. You know, like this is – he's also complained about or talked about flat earth, contrails, um, COVID-19, pyramids, pyramids and aliens maybe. Yeah, there's a lot – there's a lot I'll of strangeness anything, going anything on. Anything with a rather uh, – anything with a YouTube video, like you know how there's this, these topics of real YouTube fodder? That's – you can see the YouTube rabbit hole. You can see it on some of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, – I think, I think he's um, – Clearly not the sharpest tool in the shed, I'd have to I'm say. I'm going to blunt it a little bit more than that. I'm going to say it doesn't translate to Twitter well. Mm. Keep it off Twitter, okay. you know? Well, he did. He deleted it. Well, that's probably... Uh, I, yeah, eventually. Probably after, after, mm. after, after he was probably told to delete it and probably in breach of the social media <laughs> contract yeah, for that sure. he signed. And it's like, what What good? What good? Even if you thought it, which we, we don't agree with, obviously. No. It's not the right attitude at all. But even you thought it, okay, you tweeted out, for what benefit? Are you going to get a sponsorship with Gatorade now? Are you going to make money off the deal? You know, just mm. just just preserve your money. Keep that stuff if you have to, if you must. If you must be that ignorant, keep it in your home or your church, wherever you were allowed to do it. Just don't yep. do it on Twitter. I'm in the NBL. I, I don't want to see that shit myself. You don't want to see it. Fans don't want to see it. Kids don't want to see it. Twitter is a pretty open forum, although it skews older. We don't want to see that shit. And when you're taking the Perth Wildcats money, yeah, you know, if you're going to get the free lunch, just just stay <laughs> within the lane. Yeah. Outside of the league, mate, do what you want. Go. But while you're taking the money, um, behave. But can yeah. I just say, okay, NBL. So last year, big big hoo-ha about um, Humphreys coming out. And great. rightfully so. Yeah, sure. yeah, rightfully so. And now we get the mealy mouth statement. <laughs> Corey Webster apologizes. He, you know, it's an opportunity for us all to learn, and he's going to sit sit out of this game because we think it's all for the best, and that's the appropriate decision. And once again, he's very sorry. Like, come on, oh, come Can on, you? don't that's be a pop. so. That's a yeah, the mic pop. Just Angry. don't be so weak. Like, come out and say, Corey Webster, this is highly inappropriate, and we have we give Isaac Humphreys our hundred percent support, as was demonstrated last season, and mm. we are absolutely disgusted that you would come out and say this about a fellow player in your league, and you know, like there just needs to be stronger sanctions. I think now, mm. I don't I know. I, I just don't. I just don't like it. I just, and then they have the telecast tonight, and they get Danny Mills on. Was there ever? I and I must admit, I didn't pay huge attention to this telecast. And if we're wrong, I'll, I'll admit it. But I heard no mention of Corey Webster. Like, oh, he's sitting out because of that, and it was mentioned. Now, did, did we? Whitewash. If we missed something in the telecast, I do apologize. Total but I, whitewash. Hmm. It's frustrating. Like, I know that you're just trying to 
pump the tires on your league, right? And you're not really a proper broadcaster. You're just a promotional unit sometimes. Oh, careful. In the careful commentary. The I, I'm just going to take you there. Like that, but the NBL, I'm not heard at the NBL here because the NBL's job is to sell the NBL product, right? And to yeah, family it's... first. And that's what you do with a situation like this. You can understand that. You just bury it, right? You just don't you just, yep, that happened. Bang, we'll move it. We just uh, go, yeah. shut the door. I get that. I'm not. I'm not so down on the NBL itself. You, we've got two contrasting, but similar but contrasting opinions on that. You, like- can't, you can't have it both ways. You can't come out and say, "Oh, Isaac Humphries, you're you're an inspiration to all those other, um, you know, gay players out there that are patched in the closet, and you've given them confidence to come out." And then Corey Webster comes and slams it and says, "You've got mental guess- illness," and they don't. They don't say anything. It just seems like you're trying to have both ways. If I can sort of play devil's advocate, because I don't actually believe this, but also it's like, does it fall into that churchy kind of realm? You know, where it's like the Manly Seagulls players were kind of allowed to not wear the patch, and so were the Cairns tight ends last year, by the way. Mm. Are they able to get out on the church, on the religious grounds? So maybe there's that element to it that they yeah, haven't really maybe. brought into the discussion. I'm just sort of, you know, thinking every side. Yeah. But then the other thing is I'll say is maybe the NBL thing is like, listen, we're not going to focus on the negative. The country's coming up. We're going to celebrate the good. When the bad comes, we're going to deal with it in the way that's curt and low-key and push on with the positive. I, I, I actually don't hate the way the NBL handled it. I, I kind of have a problem with the, uh, the outside of the NBL media where you've got, I got to hand it to Code Sports, which is Matt Logue, Mick Randall. They put out articles about it both before, during, after. They told a story, set yeah. up, punchline, conclusion, or what is it? Um, set up, yeah, whatever it is, body, conclusion. Mm. It's the others where I saw one site that not write about it, and instead of getting their basketball people to do it, lift an article off the APP, the Allied Press oh, yeah. line, yep. Yep. which is you know, no byline, you know, just – just one hand. Keep, yeah. I, I, I didn't write it. Oh, there's no name on it. That was written by the cleaning lady. Oh, we don't know. Mm. Can, can I still get an autograph? That to me is worse. Yeah. But um, oh. so we've cost ourselves money. Uh, <laughs> prepared, to, <laughs> <laughs> prepared to move oh, on. Oh, the people at the NBL are going to love us. <laughs> it's not even the people at the NBL. It's not these it's basketball circles. I just, and, but you know, this is not just Corey Webster, too. It's, this is Bogut on occasion. Yeah. There's a bunch of Cairns type ends last year. That was actually handled a bit better, a bit more assertive, but, you know. Okay, well, I'll tell you this, Powerful Joe. people. Man. How about I, I, how- just, I'm just, What we're saying is we just want people to show a shred of courage, both moral and physical. Yeah. Is that? Let's, let's make it into a conversation, okay? Okay, yeah. so let's you talk about- I didn't Corey, like it. We saw the tweet. It's a chance thought, for education. It's fucking provocative. Sorry for the language. It's yeah. unneedlessly provocative, even if you thought it, it's the wrong thing to think. Keep it off Twitter. Keep it off anywhere public. Just keep that keep that hate in your heart and and walk your way. I don't want to see it. Anyway, let's move on. Whew. All right, Whew. that got fiery. Did that's going to be more of that this season? I hope. Yeah, more this fire. is going to be a different season for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So, which is a great time to remind people: if you like fire, join the Patreon um, because. That segment probably cost us. <laughs> if oh, man. Know, right? Probably well, underground. Oh, man. We, yeah, I don't know. We're on the <laughs> roster somewhere. Okay. Let's talk about, do you want to talk about Danny Mills or Hutchie and SEN? Uh, let's just quickly do Danny Mills. Danny Mills, yeah. We so talked appeared about in the game. telecast. He was on the game. Commentating. <sighs> if you call, yeah, he just, wasn't commentating. They were just having a conversation. I thought while he was the game just was on in the background. He was I thought like, he was just reading a series of bumper stickers stitched together. <laughs> just jargon talk of. This, that, build on the platform, do, do, dot, dot. It, it was like chat GPT, chat Danny Mills. Do you know what I find offensive? I didn't like and it. maybe this is me being old fashioned. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, Joe, you, you're slightly younger than me. So maybe well, you can yeah. you know, show me the ways. I find it offensive when, it, when basically a manager, you know, the guy who signs these people just calls their players pieces. Oh, you know, I didn't hear what, that. I, it's, it's become part of the lingo. It's like, you know, I, I'm going to stop you there. It's become part of the American and NBA lingo. Right. And that shows a, shows perhaps where Danny Mills' head is at, wants that NBA. And mm. why not? Big money, big league. Sure, I get it. I'm not just you know discouraging the guy or whatever. But, I just find um, it demeaning that people are just yeah. like in this league are just put down to, oh, we just needed this piece and we got this piece. So They're like, just well, not, though, in the NBA. Like, there's, that's not – in the NBA, it's pieces because you can trade. You can't. You, yeah. you, know, you you trade out a pawn. You put a pawn out, two things. It's a sacrifice pawn. That's a trade. That's a piece. Mm. But in the NBA, it's like you sign a guy and you either cut him and sign someone. It's not, it's not a trade yeah. piece. 
don't it's know. Just it's the, just this is cheap pickup just, of the of the language. It just feels so transactional. It's just like yeah, mm. yeah. Like we're not really looking to find another Bryce Cotton here. We're just bringing in a piece. You know is that what he it's said. Like, well, I, no, I don't think he said that. I'm just paraphrasing. Oh, okay. Just in okay. the way so, that it comes across, it's very much like you know we're you know we're just we're just shuffling mm. pieces for this season, and then we'll look to retool and we'll bring another piece. But this is what I'm saying about I see you're you're taking umbrage with the humanity of it. I'm taking umbrage with the jargon of it because that to me is just stuff where that's just what they say in the US. And instead of actually going like, you know what, the NBL is more about certainly injury prevention, bit of rehab, like, okay, we've signed this guy. We think he's going to miss the first five games of the year. We'll nurse him back, but the the ceiling is there. And Jesse Wagstaff, what has he got left? The NBL is more of a, it's about that sort of, that that's the actual you know, if you want to call it like peace play, that's the chess mm. moves you're making. More micro, more more human. Like yeah. Sydney quite annoyed last year. Like we think we we think he's got something. We're going to bring him over. You don't trade for him. You don't pick up a piece. You're like you're investing in the the human being in the NBL because rosters are smaller, talent pool smaller, money's smaller, no trades, and just just what I'm saying is dress for the job you have, not mm. the one you want. Ooh. Yeah, well, this is harsh. This is a <laughs> brutal episode of the Pocket Pie. This yeah, is out of the pocket. It is. It is. This is but this is crazy. He does trade in generalisms and buzzwords. Basketball buzzwords are yeah. Danny Mills' stock in trade. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's very good at saying a lot without saying anything. And as soon as you delve into anything where there might be substance required, such as Bryce Cotter's and citizenship situation, yeah. it's very much all oh, the sensitivities. Well, and also, like, you want to why? talk about bringing in a piece? Sign a third import. How about that? <laughs> That's the biggest and best piece you've got. Okay. But they won't likely won't be doing that because their owner can't afford uh, it. Craig Hutchinson <laughs> of SEN, nine point two million in the red. Now I've heard all sorts of stuff about this story. Author of the article with a axe to grind. Do you know how often I get heard that rationale after every bad article? I hear that. I'm like, oh, I that. oh yeah, author's got an axe to grind, or writer, mm. reporter's got an axe to grind. I'm like, oh, they, yeah, they all do. That's kind of the job. Um, but. I'm not discrediting that, by the way. That that very well may be the case, but I'm like, I just hear that so often. I'm I'm still skeptical. Yeah. Article comes out. Forget which newspaper. Apologies to them. You deserve the pat on the back. Uh, Nine point two million in the red. But what was more important? Hachi, one point five million dollar bonus. You sink the company by ten mil, you get one point five. Hey, you know, you Dear walk away. Me. It's uh, it's that's that's uh, you know. CEO founder 101, isn't What's it? What's Alan Joyce 101 of Qantas? <laughs> Have we learned nothing from venture capital performance? And you've got, you got to feather your own nest first. This is very important mm. in any business enterprise. Um, look, I think- Are you worried? Fun- do, you, do, do you read into it? Are you worried on it from a Wildcat level, from an NBL level? Uh, you know, it's like it, the Wildcats are just one, one chink in there, the SEN armor. You know, a like, small one as well. Yeah, it's not. But the fact I mean, they haven't got a third import and the roster looks a little lean and the spend's like, mm, mm. Eh. well, they'd be certainly be they'd certainly be looking at yeah, saving money where they could. Oh yeah. Um, but the problem we've got is that the economic environment has changed. We've got raising interest rates. Capital is suddenly not as cheap as it was. Mm. So the Commonwealth Bank are saying, well, we've given we've lent you all this money, and now it's time to pay yeah. it back and we'd like it back please i mean yeah. that's kind of what you have to do when you borrow money is you've got to eventually pay it back mm. you can only rob peter to pay paul for so long this is the thing and that and they must admit the 9.5 loss and they've been on a big acquisition they've signed a bunch of funky investments you know who really wants the wildcats it doesn't really make your money you know, it was yeah. always a philanthropy exercise for a bend at so yeah, eh, bit peculiar. And then all these sort of small New Zealand teams. I never got it, but maybe they've got a strategy to milk the betting ad, ad roll money. I'm not sure, but I will say that smart people I know in media, and I won't give my credentials, but and or theirs or their names, mm. but they're like, well, you know, we're looking to acquire some of their talent if, even when they became available at the end of the summer. There's a lot of people who are thinking they may nab some big uh, SEN talent. You know, your Andy Mars, and you know, if that, if so, if SEN would not quite fulfil its end of the bargain. Yeah, look. Smart people. Mm, well, that what I want to do, I think at this point, it's probably time for me to quote one of my favorite TV <laughs> personalities. Oh. No. Marcus Lemonis from The Prophet. Oh. Mm. Light on me. Yeah. He, he, when he goes into and assesses a business, he looks at 
people, process, product. And that's basically what you're looking for in a business. Now, if you look at Wildcats slash SEN, do you want the people? Do you feel like the people are top of, top of what they do? Hmm. You've got Danny Mills. You've got suppliers. You've got some, a new media guy who seems to be struggling a little bit. Do you want the people? Okay, maybe not. They have the process. Do they have a process? I think they did. I think they did. Though it seems to be staggering a little bit now. Yes. And then they've got a product. Product's What's their, good. Pro- What's their product? Is their product well, good? Well, their product is 13,000 members that are as passionate as any sport fan. Those, those members are great. It's about monetizing those members, right? For sure, yeah. So how are you going to monetize them? By having them listen to AM radio? <laughs> I don't get it. I just bet don't on, bet on get the it, team. Joe Core. Well, I mean, they. the thing is, I, well, I don't know how you um, – what was the word you said? How do you sell to them? Monetize. I know how you exploit them. You just keep putting <laughs> this team out there at RSA Arena, which is incredibly accessible. The team trades off its – but the Wildcats is a big trademark. That's a big brand, mm. you know, and I think they trade off that and slap some betting ad roll in and around the building. Yeah. That's that's big money, man. Betting is big money and SEN are all over it. So I'm right on the fence as to whether I believe this stuff about SEN or not. I've heard really smart people on both ends, smart, good people saying, no, nah, it's fine. Smart, good people saying, eh, okay, keep your head to the ground. You know what? Let me ask you this. You mm-hmm. can go out there right now. You can buy some. It's a listed entity. You can buy some shares in SEG, right? Yep. SEG. Yes, sure. Uh, would you? Your own no. money, Joe. Or- no, no, no. I because I don't. I don't listen to the me personally. I don't listen to the radio. Nor anyone. No anyone who does. I like sports betting and ad roll, but I don't like the acquisitions SEN have made. I don't like buying into the radio. I'd prefer if they directed that focus to digital and things like that. I the properties they've bought are mm. good for the next. The, until the boomer generation die, and then it's just you've got a asset you hot potato. You can't get rid of this thing. <laughs> so for that reason, if I wanted to make a pump and dump short return in the in the in the short term, yeah, perhaps. But yeah. I, that's not what I'm looking to do, and I don't think well, a lot of people do. It's not what the market's wanting either. Because if you look at their their trend over the last five years, 2019 down to 2023, it's all one direction, and that direction really? is down. Their share price. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So at that that, yeah. that that that's to quote the wire. Not that I've watched it, but I've heard you talk about it. Follow the money. <laughs> that's it. Share price. Let's talk about the blitz. Let's go on to these teams. Um, we were sort of chatting before the thing. We want to talk about teams that we thought of before the blitz, and now yep. their their stock has risen. People who have fallen, Adelaide, most specifically, <laughs> and then teams that have kind of we're still stagnant or don't have an opinion on or waiting for more. Yep. Um, can I give you my risers and you tell me if you agree or disagree and we'll talk some more. Okay, tell me. Risers. So these are teams I had a either yeah, like okay opinion of or my opinion of them has gone up after seeing them play. New Zealand, Brisbane, Cairns, Tasmania. Yeah, good combo. I had Can Tasmania I thought were going to be top four. I now think they may be a really good team, you know, top a top two, three, yeah, but in yeah. a contested uh, ladder. I like their point guard. I oh, like him a lot. I, I like the small point guard. We were saying mm-hmm. how much we love it. And Milton Doyle, they've got a bit of consistency. I, I actually really like Lee. I just I just like the fit of that roster. They feel tight. Scott Roth didn't even bother coaching. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Cairns, I got a better impression of Cairns. I thought they put up a lot of points on Perth. I think they're going to defend. I think they're going to be – I don't think they're going to win a lot of games. But I think they're going to be in games to the end. And then Taron Armstrong, their rookie point guard, I think is going to struggle to get him over the line, just being young. But I think he's a yeah, okay. really, really good player. But you've got to be a special player at that age to to win your games in the NBL down the line. And I don't think they're going to do that. But I just think they're going to be – no win is going to be easy against them unless they get injured. And then sure. Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Brisbane are going to play D. And this league has shown, if nothing over the last couple of years of covering this pod, if you play D and stay healthy – you won't be a, a bottom of the league table. I think there's. A, I thought they were going to be a really bad team. I think they're going to be sort of that mid table, which for them is a huge success because they've been really bad the last couple of years. So, mm. um, and then New Zealand. I they lost two great imports. I thought they were going to be bad. I actually quite like what I've seen. Do you have any qualms with that list or anyone to add or what do you think? No, that's actually quite a good list. Um, I'm probably not quite as high as on Cairns as perhaps you are. Um, I think say that again. I'm not quite as high on Cairns as perhaps you are. 
Mm. Um, I just had low. I thought they were going to finish last, and I don't think that anymore. Oh, so. okay, right. No, they won't finish last. Um, they'll be in the bottom quadrant, but I think they'll they won't be an embarrassment to themselves like some other teams. I think. No, Adelaide's get Adelaide will finish last. There's just no doubt about it. Um, yeah, look, I uh, it's pretty good. I'm sort of more like who am, who am I excited about, and who am I just not who are you excited about? In? Who blows your skirt up? Sure, I'm excited. I'm actually, I'm a little bit excited about Brisbane Bullets. Me too. I just thought, Shh. and why are you excited? Well, it seems like they actually have a pulse, and that's kind of fun. They're a team that has been just meh for so long, right? Discontent, so cantankerous, perhaps. Yeah, and I like <laughs> I, I like their coach. I, you know, Shula, yeah. Justin Shula. I think Justin Shula, formerly he, of United. Yeah, yeah. I think he's brought a different flavor to this team, and I think that it's just the shake up they needed. So I I'm agree. hopeful that they will, uh, they might actually show something this year. So that's good. Mm. Tazzy, yeah, they're I really like them too. And uh, Tazzy, yeah. Tazzy, um, I'm down on Sydney Kings. Oh, you're putting so in my fallers category. I had Adelaide and Illawarra. I did not have the Kings. Okay. Why do you have the Kings as a faller? I just feel like they've had a real clean out of talent last season, and they brought Bolden in. And what was your thoughts on him? Sorry to depart. What? No, just well, not not really much. Just didn't do a lot. Mm. Um, I, and sure, he'll get better. He's like he played in the NBA. He has talent, but. Can you recapture that form? Like he's been out for three, four yeah. years. Like that's yeah. a long time. So I don't know. Hmm. I just think that I just think they're leaning on him a little too much. So um, Perth, that- Perth, look at, like if Bryce Cotton keeps playing the way he's been playing of recent games, including those ignite games, they're going to be a chance. Just because he's so good. I had them in the stagnants. My stagnants were. Perth, South East Melbourne, Sydney, and Melbourne itself. And only Melbourne I've only put in the stagnants because I thought they were going to be good anyway. And I saw them beat up on a couple of teams. You know, they they just got by Brisbane. Yeah. And then who they beat up on Illawarra. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that that's par for the course. And I that checks out. I just still I still saw the same lethargic Travers. Not lethargic, mm-hmm. but just not I would, you know, I thought maybe there'd be a real switch as he crisscrossed the coasts. I'll say that five <laughs> times fun. Um, I thought there'd be a real, you know, he's, uh, but nope, yep. <laughs> nope, same disposition, which may be good, may be bad. That's why I've got him in the in the stadiums. And people going wild for Della Vadova. They're like, oh, he's turned the corner <laughs> offensively at age 41. What? <laughs> Late 30s? I'm like, come on, man. He I hit a couple do, of shots. Boom. I do like Delhi with a chip on his shoulder, though. I, I, do. Want, I want to see him try and play his way into that boomer squad. Do, I really want to see that. Do you think he's coming off the bench? For Melbourne United? Yeah. Uh. Nah. I don't think so either. Nah, he'll play. He'll, he'll start. Yeah, he'll start. And Ilya will come off the bench for sure. Yeah. Here's my problem, and I've said this from the beginning with Melbourne. Delva Dover, Golding, Illy. I mean, these guys are going to miss time. Golding and Illy in particular. Well, Illy, we don't know. Mm. Concussion, hard to say. But that's an old that's a old and a lot of injuries. Illy just plays so damn hard he's going to hurt himself. So Yep. That's my. But we, anyway, we're talking about the just on just on Delhi though. Do you really? I'm I'm starting to wonder if the Boomers made the right call. Oh, we mentioned should, this. Maybe the they should have taken Delhi as the knockdown shooter instead of Chris Golding. We spoke about this. either he was going in and in. <laughs> <laughs> now he's being silly. Um, <laughs> stagnant. So you had no Sydney. I mean, the fact that Adams and Hogue didn't play. Mm, are you over, you're overacting. I think you're being. I silly. probably am. Actually, good point. Yeah, fair I enough. I thought, yeah, they look kind of bad. Yeah, they're missing their two best players, an MVP <laughs> and an NBA, an NBA first teamer. Well, uh, yeah. when you put it like that, <laughs> they struggled a little bit in the half court. Like, there, there's your <laughs> pretty simple solution there. Let's just, you know, that guy who drops twenty five points at a high clip. Yeah, put two of them in. Good yeah, God. okay, fair um, enough. Sem, I only got patches yeah. of their games. Were like they're hurt already. Alan Williams is missing time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, it's this hard. team just can't get out of its own way. It's hard to get a read on him, really. But Very hard. I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't excited. I wasn't excited to see them play. They didn't jump out of off the page for me. And that's a that's a team that's sat in the middle its exa- yep. entire existence to this point. Yeah. 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 It's very much like that, isn't it? It's just, yeah. We'll wait on them. Um, Perth. So you you were excited by Perth. Tell me why. 
Well, excited. I, I like some of the some of the form that their younger players are showing. Like Ben Henshaw, yeah. he's looking real good. And you got Michael Harris as well. Always been a good shooter, great yeah. shooter last year. But now seems yeah, to like be him. playing with a lot of confidence. Now it is only preseason. He'll probably get benched in the regular season. But I just think they they have the more depth. You had last season you're relying on Norton and Blanchfield. Yeah, and point. to rely on those guys is always a risky proposition. Now you've got these young guys who have a bit of hunger. So I'm I'm thinking they might be okay. But starting Jesse Wagstaff is not a recipe for success. Um, what do you like about it? Uh, he's just he's old and slow and yeah. I just don't I don't want to, he's not he should be just the bench veteran. You know. He He should be an assistant in the uniform. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to me I, they look small. And what was the biggest problem with the Wildcats of last year? Rebounding. Okay, people, you don't understand what's happened here. Zencaster has failed us. One of it, it does this all the time. We're going to be changing platforms. Zencaster, you lost a customer. Okay, you lost two Dead customers. Tours. Now, Dead tours, Zencaster. now I'm speaking to the microphone, recording locally, and Kenyon's on speakerphone on my mobile phone. So the quality's terrible. You know why? And uh, by the way, now's a good time to say a big thank you to our patrons for supporting this <laughs> dumpster fire that is this thing. You know, but we're not paid to do this professionally. You know, well, not not a lot. And that's the issue. All right. We're talking about Perth. And I think I was about to say that their one big issue last year was they were soft. They didn't defend and they didn't rebound. And I don't think they've done anything to address it other than Saar, who's quite lengthy and long, but still pretty slender. And I don't think the answer initially, I didn't see it from Pinder. Cairns put up 90 some points. I didn't see the defense that they needed. Uh, I'm worried. No, there's no mongrel. None. And uh, it really looks like a really coach team is going to be run up and down and score a lot of points, which is great for selling tickets. Don't get me wrong, but it's probably not going to win you a championship. No, and I think they're again going to. I just don't see where this roster's gotten better from last year from the play of the Blitz. I don't see where I, they had a clear deficiency, and unless Pinder's sort of he did, does have the face mask on, maybe there's more to see. But I I still don't see where their major deficiency of size and what have you. And rebounding and defense has been uh, corrected in the blitz. So that's a little... I don't think it's even a wait and see. I don't think they've addressed it. But, I mean, having said that, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if, I'm, if we're correct on that. Um, Got to stay Joe Court. This has been a Perth heavy podcast, hasn't it? This has just been a nightmare. Uh, we still got to the sort of 35, 40 minute mark. So we're, we're kind of out of here. Uh, next week, we're going to try some new platforms of recording. If you're out there and you have a recommendation, join us on Twitter, at NBL Pocket Pod, and send your suggestions there. Actually, you know what? Become a patron. It's just called X, isn't it? X, sorry. Join us on X. But even better than that, become a patron and send us a message in there once you've paid the however much we charge. I've really forgotten. Do that. Um, And yeah, join us at at NBL Pocket Pod on X or Twitter, what was Twitter, and uh, Instagram and a few other things. You'll, You'll find us. Type in NBL Pocket Pod, you'll find us. And uh, Canyon's kind of on some of these platforms. I don't know. Where are you at, Canyon? Uh, hit me up at Bastardon at Canyon at social.lol. That's L O L. Enjoy the rest of the Blitz. Anything to tell the folks as we end the Blitz and then kind of have a wee break and in, into the season? I uh, look forward to NBL Pocket Podcast coming up this season. Bigger, brighter, better than ever. Look at our platform. Bitchier. Bitchier and meaner. Bitchier. <laughs> I like that. All right, Kenyon. We, we came up with a good slogan in that last episode. Yeah, what was it? This this podcast is, it's, it's not, not what much. you want, but it's what you need. It's not much, but it's what you need. What is it? <laughs> Something like that. We'll work on it. Okay, if you want to hear that, Appreciate folks, go back and listen to the last episode. Go ahead and do that and tell us yeah. at Twitter or whatever. All right, we're out of here. Kenyon, pleasure. Bye.